Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I shared a new video with you. I know my day job has been extraordinarily busy of late and I've had so little time to record, so I'm so sorry I've been away longer than usual. But I am back with hopefully an interesting topic for you today. Before we get to that, I would like to remind you to please hit on that subscribe button and ensure that you never miss a video from me when I produce one. Also hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy my content. That really really helps to spread my videos around YouTube and hit that all important algorithm and ensure that more people can see my videos in their recommended feeds. Also hit that notifications bell, ring that bell to make sure that you don't miss any content in conjunction with the subscribe button, that really helps. Absolutely. And do consider if you would becoming a member of the channel as well. I have so many wonderful members already. You can join at three levels of membership and get lots of perks such as members only videos, shout outs and lots of other stuff as well. So do consider that if you would. Right. What are we talking about today? I'm going to be talking all about Microsoft 365 and backup. Do you need to backup Microsoft 365? This is a question that I've been pondering and have been asked by customers and colleagues ever since I've been working with Microsoft 365 for well over 10 or 11 years now plus. And it's an interesting one. Uh, I'm gonna dive in and we're gonna look at things like OneDrive, we're gonna look at things like SharePoint, and we're gonna look at some of the features that could be considered uh, substitutes or alternatives to traditional backup and restore solutions. Are they enough? Let's dive in and we are gonna find out right now. So at Inspire 2023, back in July, Microsoft announced that they were introducing Microsoft 365 Backup and Microsoft 365 Archive. And this isn't out yet. This is going to be coming soon. Who knows when? I actually asked Microsoft only yesterday at the time of recording this video if there was any more news on this, and the answer was, we don't know. But... I was quite excited about this because it's been a long, long time that we've had Microsoft 365 in the wild world now. I mean, I've been using it for over 10 years. And even back in those days, I had customers talking to me about, well, do we need a backup solution in Microsoft 365? Back then, I was probably giving the wrong advice. I was saying, no, you don't really need to because there are other things within Microsoft 365 that will take care of that in a different way for you. And I would tell them about things like versioning control and retention policies and all that sort of stuff. I've learned a lot since then and uh, my thoughts on that are very, very different. Those features are very, very convenient, very good ways of getting uh, data back and protecting data within Microsoft 365, but they are no substitute for a traditional backup and restore solution. So, what is Microsoft's reasoning for bringing out this solution? Well, at Microsoft 365 Backup First, the rise in ransomware encryption attacks and security breaches means that organizations are making cybersecurity a priority to safeguard themselves from losing data and sensitive information. And organizations need to have a system to help them meet regulatory requirements. M365 Backup provides recovery of your OneDrive, SharePoint, and Exchange Online data at unprecedented speeds for large volumes of data with a restore service level agreement while keeping it all within the Microsoft security boundary. That's important. So we can back up all or select SharePoint sites, OneDrive accounts, exchange mailboxes in your tenant. For SharePoint sites as well, read Teams uh, documents. So what we can also do is restore files, sites, and mailbox items in your tenant in parallel to a prior point in time in a granular manner or at massive scale. And we can also search or filter content in the backups using key metadata such as item or site names, owners, or event types with specific restore point date ranges. And you'll be able to access Microsoft 365 Backup directly within the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. This is, this is really cool stuff. I wish it were here now. I hope we get to hear about it soon. So, 
Microsoft 365 Archive, um, the other part of this announcement was that many organizations' content is growing at an exponential rate within 365. That is so true. This intensity is driven from collaboration, but also from customers uh, importing masses of transactional data to take advantage of Microsoft's advanced content AI services and integrated security, compliance, and search and collaboration features. So some content becomes inactive and less valuable after time, but remains essential for business records and compliance. So you may see extra storage costs increase once you fully consume your included Microsoft 365 storage as content grows. And Microsoft are saying here that they know that you're gonna need a more cost-effective solution to securely and compliantly store long-term data within 365. So with this in mind, they have announced Microsoft 365 Archive, which gives a cold data storage tier that enables you to keep inactive or aging data within SharePoint at a cost-effective price point, uh, matching the value of that data's lifecycle stage. With Archive, you can select an archive or reactivate full sites in place without needing to migrate your data outside of Microsoft. File level archiving will be coming in the second half of 2024. So oh, this gives us a clue that um, the actual features of backup and archive will be um, coming at least in the early part of 2024, maybe even hopefully the late part of 2023. Fingers crossed for that. We can also maintain full admin level search, e-discovery, access policy, sensitivity label, DLP, retention policy, access control settings, and other security and compliance functionality, and gain additional decluttering experiences and site lifecycle control capability. So this is absolutely awesome news uh, from my point of view. I actually wonder why it's taken Microsoft so long to get into this space, because for the last few years, there have been many third-party offerings uh, in the marketplace for Microsoft 365 traditional granular uh, backup and restore solutions. We've got people like Veeam doing it. Uh, Symantec uh, have a solution. We've got people like, um, who, who else have we got out there? I'm sure I'm missing a, a very, very obvious name. Um, on the archive space, we've got players like Mimecast who do a very, very good uh, archiving and, and journaling service. So why is it taking Microsoft so long? I really don't know. Uh, that's for them to answer. But still the question will come from customers that I deal with. Do you actually need a backup? Can't we just take care of this sort of thing with some of the features that are built in? Let's take a quick look at uh, what those capabilities are that people are talking about. For example, let's go into a OneDrive. Here in my OneDrive, I have a few documents and folders in here, and um, what I can do is I can uh, go into this document, and clearly it's got nothing in it, so I'll just put some content in there, and I will leave it at that. I'm, I'm happy with that document, so there we go. Now, if I... Uh, go into the document uh, again, or right click on it, I can see some version history there. So I can see that I have created a second version of that document today. I've overwritten the old version. What I can do is I can restore that previous version. I can download that previous version. I can delete that previous version. So a lot of organizations that I've worked with have considered that a form of backup and recovery. Um, not really the case, to be honest. The other thing that you can do within uh, OneDrive, and for OneDrive also read SharePoint, is if you delete a document, uh, then it's going to go into the recycle bin. If we click on the recycle bin here on the left, we can see that we have uh, a document in there that I deleted just a few moments before recording this video. Now, it will remain in there for a period of time, uh, and then it will go into the second stage recycle bin. So if, if I wanted to do so, I could, uh, I could trigger that process and, uh, uh, or, and, and manually delete that, forcing it into that second stage recycle bin. So we can see that in there now. So you can recover um, this deleted document for a period of 93 days, I believe it is. So you can go into there and you can uh, hit on restore and it will put that back uh, in, in place uh, where it originally was and there it is. So you can see why people might get the, the feeling that this is a, 
a, a form of, uh, of of backup and restore, and uh, no, you, it kind of is in a way. Um, the other thing you can do is you can restore your OneDrive to a point in time. So we're in this OneDrive document library now, let's call it. And if you go into settings, you can go to restore your OneDrive and you can restore up to 30 days past and you can restore to yesterday, a week ago, three weeks ago, or a custom date and time up to 30 days ago. So there's that option as well. You have that ability to restore your OneDrive. And the same sort of things can be said of SharePoint as well. So we're in a SharePoint document library here within a communication site. We have the same principles. We can delete and it'll go to the first stage recycle bin. Then it will go to the second stage recycle bin. Additionally, from here in the settings, you can go to restore this library and you can select a date, a uh, custom date and time up to 30 days ago. So it's only going to go back to 30 days. So that's, that's all well and good. We've got some restore features there. We've got some uh, um, recycle bin settings there as well. And we've got some versioning. Is that going to be enough? Um, well, I'm going to give you the consultant answer in a way. It, it depends. And it's it's all because it's down to any organization's level of risk appetite. For me personally, um, I would organize, I would advise even most organizations that I'm dealing with to consider having a, a traditional backup and restore solution with their Microsoft 365 investment. And the main reasons that I have for this are first and foremost ransomware attacks are becoming more and more prevalent and there is a misconception that ransomware cannot affect cloud files that is not true your onedrive can be uh, affected by uh, by ransomware as can sharepoint as can files within within microsoft 365 so if we look at this particular article for Example, Microsoft know about this. So ransomware detection and recovering your files. So there's even instructions from Microsoft here on how to uh, look at your OneDrive, confirm if your files are, are infected and try and restore your OneDrive. It's very unlikely that it's gonna be that simple if you've been cons compromised by a ransomware uh, attack um, by some of those nasty bad actors out there. So, Ransomware, um, definitely something that is a big, big part of the decision-making process for having a backup and restore solution. Because bear in mind, the technologies that we've just looked at only relate to single files and single item recoveries. Um, if you've been affected by ransomware, then you're going to need to potentially restore a lot of your data, a large content of, of data, we're possibly talking several gigabytes, several terabytes even perhaps, if you've had a, a very nasty compromise. So this is where a full traditional backup and restore solution is going to be essential in my opinion. It's also something that if you are a highly regulated organization, which many, many organizations are now, I mean, you probably are even if you don't know that you are because let's face it every organization has a responsibility to conform to some sort of regulatory compliance uh, even if you're not in the eu for example you uh, are going to be affected by gdpr in some way very likely if you're a u.s organization dealing with eu counterparts suppliers or customers then you're going to be bound by gdpr it's as simple as that so you need to think about these things and protect yourself in the best possible way Proactive um, protection is absolutely the best way and deploying ransomware protection as per this document here is a great step at looking how you can protect yourself from things like ransomware um, with all sorts of different technologies like encrypting files in place and uh, cloud app security features and looking at things like Microsoft Secure Score, attack surface reduction, 
and so on and so forth. So definitely look at the proactive steps that you can take to protect yourself as much as you possibly can to begin with. Um, this is definitely, definitely worth taking the time to do for any organization. It will help you. It's not foolproof. You know, it's, on, it's only ever going to be as secure as the human factors involved. It takes one user who is ill-informed, untrained, uh, not confident, and uh, fails to ask the right questions and simply clicks on something and boom, that can be it. But what about retention, I hear you say? That's another argument that I've often heard for, well, I don't need a backup and restore um, solution. Well, again, not the case. Retention is there for a different reason. It is there to ensure that data is retained and or deleted in line with company policies or uh, regulatory compliance standards. So if we look in our Purview Compliance Center here and we look at data lifecycle management and M365, we can configure retention policies and retention labels. And I've done many videos on this that you can find on my channel about how you can use these labels and policies to ensure that even when a user deletes a file or a a folder or, or, or something like that, then it's going to be retained, a copy to another location, depending where it's stored, it, it'll go into a substrate for holds folder or a, um, or a particular mailbox, if it's exchange and, and so on and so forth. So um, that is purely for the purposes of regulatory compliance. It is not. So those items can be recovered if they are lost or corrupted um, and doing so is um, a complex and very detailed um, set of tasks that uh, an experienced uh, search and e-discovery admin will will need to do and they wouldn't want to be doing it for the reasons of recovering from uh, a ransomware attack it's completely a different thing so there you go. That is a very, very quick look at um, the reasons for why you may or may not need a backup solution within Microsoft 365. And let's move to close out this video now with my final thoughts on this. So there you go. Some closing thoughts from me. I personally think that it is well worth any organization considering investing in a backup and restore solution for their Microsoft 365. In the world we're living in today with cybersecurity being ever more important and awareness of it being uh, right up there for the organizations I'm dealing with, I'm now finding that they are coming to us wanting to talk about cybersecurity, whereas a few years ago it was the other way around. We were knocking on doors and trying to get people interested in the subject and realizing that it is very, very important. So at least the awareness is out there now and backup is one of the things that an organization can do to limit their risk it all comes down to risk and risk appetite the features that we looked at there like the versioning control and the recycle bins and uh, the various uh, restoring onedrive restoring sharepoint document libraries they are helpful but to me they are really there to help users who have messed up and just need to get some single items back um, and the broader uh, scheme of things shall we say if you are hit by a ransomware attack then getting your data back without a backup really isn't going to be simple um, restores of certain sites or libraries and whatnot only go back 30 days I'm dubious as to whether that would work anyway. Versioning control, it's um, its not uh, a silver bullet, in my opinion. I think um, it is definitely something that is vulnerable to ransomware as well, versioning. So definitely, definitely don't over-rely on that. Retention policies and labels just not relevant in my opinion to the conversation they are for an entirely different purpose they are there for regulatory compliance uh, and 
nothing really to do with backup and restore and the recovery of data um, that has been lost in some way, shape or form. Most likely, let's face it, by some sort of breach, by some sort of ransomware attack or malicious insider action, shall we say. So, my recommendation would be very, very much consider your level of risk appetite. If you think you could recover from a ransomware situation without a traditional backup and restore solution, then fill your boots. But I would caution uh, very, very much that stance. I think of traditional backup and restore solutions for Microsoft 365 as, as an insurance policy. You know that you need it, you know that you need that belt and braces there, but you hope that you never need to use it. But it's reassuring to know that it's there, right? And I get why some people might be skeptical about this because I was I was one of those. Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, uh, my attitude towards this has flipped completely. Looking back, I was very much of the opinion that no, you, you don't need a backup in 365. It's all taken care of with features like even auditing, e-discovery, that sort of thing. But I don't think so anymore. My, I, I feel that I've learned uh, differently. Uh, I'll certainly be interested to know what everybody else thinks about this. So let me know in the comments what your stance is on backup and restore for organizations, uh, which products you've used, which third party ones to this point. I am very, very excited about Microsoft getting into this space. I think it's been a long time coming. I'm, I'm staggered that it's taken them this long to get into this field because I think it's so, so important. I just hope they do it great. I hope that their offering is better than the third party offerings out there and blows it out of the water because for my mind, when I talk to customers, I'm always looking for ways to get the best for them. And that for me usually means having everything in the Microsoft 365 E5 space. That's not because I want to sell E5. That's because I genuinely feel that's the best place for them to have everything together. Um, and yeah, I get the eggs in one basket argument, but I just think that it makes for a better experience uh, having everything all in one single pane of glass. But that's just me. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the ever divisive subject of backups and restore capabilities in M365. So, hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you've not already done so. Do consider becoming a member and please hit that notifications bell so you never miss any of my content. Thank you so much. I will endeavor to be back with more content uh, in the regular schedule of release. It's been a bit of a while, as I said at the start of this video. Thank you so much for all of your support. It means a lot. You take care now. Bye-bye.